Good Wednesday morning. I'm going to bring to you today's word of encouragement, and I want to kind of take it from a little bit different angle. I mean, when we're talking about spiritual things, we're probably not talking about guys like Hulk Hogan, The Rock, The Million Dollar Man, or Jimmy, the Superfly Snuka. Those are WWE wrestlers who are really not too close to God, except a couple of them have actually come to faith in God. The Million Dollar Man has actually turned his life around and given it to God and led other people to Christ. But I don't want to talk about WWE wrestlers as much as I want to talk about spiritual wrestlers. See, last fall my son was exposed to these guys, but I want to encourage you to take on the name of a new wrestler, a guy named Epaphras. If you turn to Colossians chapter 4, verse 12, there's a guy named Epaphras who is a wrestler, but he's not jumping off the top rope. He's not giving the people's elbow. He's uh, wrestling earnestly in prayer. It says, Epaphras, a member of your own fellowship, and a servant of Christ Jesus sends you his greetings. He prays earnestly for you. Some translations um, say he's wrestling for you in prayer, or he's struggling with you on behalf, on your behalf. He's always praying earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and fully confident that you are fully um, following the whole will of God. This word struggling means to, to wrestle and, and to, it's like an athletic contest where there's a warfare, where you're in the grips, you're going for it. And so here we are in the month of May, we're talking about pray in May, pray at home while you stay at home. And a lot of times we pray for circumstances and we've been praying for leaders, we've been praying for provision and protection, but have we been praying for spiritual maturity? Have we been praying that people be locked into that? And are we wrestling in that prayer? This word to wrestle or to pray earnestly comes from the Greek word agony. agony. And it is to pray with such a way that it causes agony that if I don't get this thing, I'm going to continue and go for it. I'm going to fight until it hurts. So the question for us, do we pray until it hurts? Do we pray in such a way that we wrestle? Um, and it's kind of the same pictures you see in Genesis where Jacob wrestled with God until he got God's blessing. Are you willing to wrestle hard until you get God's blessing, either in your life or in the life of other people? I want to encourage you to, to, um, to pray like that. And why, do, why did Epaphras pray? He prayed for a couple of things. He prayed that people would stand firm in the will of God. When you pray for people, in your prayer requests, in your life groups, or when you send your prayer requests in, do you say, I'm praying that you would stand firm in the will of God, that you would be strong in knowing what God's will is. And a lot of times we'll pray for health, we'll pray for God's will about a job, maybe a situation. Um, but do we stand firm in the, knowing God's ho holy and moral will? To know the difference between good and evil. Um, he's praying that we would stand firm and that we'd be mature. And being mature is acting like Christ. You know, very rarely do we ever get prayer requests sent into the church to say, you know, pray that I would grow in maturity, that I would act more like Jesus and less like my flesh. You know, I'd encourage you that if we're going to wrestle for people, that we would not only wrestle for the circumstances, but we would wrestle that they would grow in faith, that they would grow in maturity, they would act more like Jesus and less like the world and less like their flesh. Epaphras also wrestles for this. He prays that they would be fully assured, that they have confidence in God's promises. You know, one of the things that I pray for in my group is not only the specific things that people lay out, but I pray that people would be confident in God's promises, that they can live a life that is totally locked into God. And I think we need to be agonizing over those kinds of things. We need to be wrestling hard. We need to be gripping those things for other people's lives. So when you pray, do you wrestle? Do you wrestle so that people can be fully confident of God's love, God's truth, God's promises, so they can say yes to Jesus in the right and holy things and say no to things that are of the flesh, no to the things of the world. I want to encourage you that as we pray in May, that it's not just in May, is it? We're going to continue on starting next week in June, but we need, still need to be wrestlers. We need to be wrestlers for faith, wrestlers in our, for our own life, for God's will, and other people. So do we agonize until things are accomplished in our prayers? Do we pray not only for physical needs, but do we pray for spiritual holiness, for maturity? I want to encourage you to do that, that you would not be a WWE wrestler, but every time you see one of those commercials, anytime you see one of those goofy guys, you say, you know what, I'm gonna wrestle, but I'm gonna wrestle like Epaphras. I wanna have an Epaphras shirt, and I wanna wrestle hard in prayer, earnestly for other people. Now, the first thing they need to do 
before you can wrestle is you need to be as sure of, of who you are in Jesus Christ. And if you're not sure who you are in Jesus Christ, we'd encourage you that to seek us out, to ask questions. You can text 31996. Um, you can text the word belong to 31996 and somebody will reach out to you to help you know how you can be sure. Because you know what? We want to wrestle for you. We want to pray earnestly so that you might know the will of God, so that you might be encouraged and strengthened. And so we want to be like Epaphras on your behalf. Will you be like Epaphras on others' behalf? So I encourage you today, put on your wrestling clothes, put on your wrestling knee pads, but do it as you pray, and then you'll bless other people. Thank you for applying God's word.